Hi everyone, this is Mo Volans back for AudioTuts.com and in this video we're going to be concentrating on parallel processing of drums in Logic Pro and this is just one way you can do it and I'm sure there are plenty of other ways um, and I'd love to hear you know, your method for, for doing this in the comments. Um, it's always great to have a couple of different takes and a couple of different ways of doing things. Um, and I have covered this subject in text at some point or another and it has been covered by other authors but I thought it might be quite nice to have a video um, demonstrating it working in, in an actual project um, because it's something that I keep getting asked about and it's a subject that never gets old. Um, parallel drum processing is just something that um, people seem to latch onto and want to know about so um, I thought it might be useful to at least some of you. Okay so this is a project that's sort of in in process, in progress and um, it's sort of an electronica thing and there's several drum tracks and currently they are being parallel processed. Now, instead of me setting something up from scratch, I thought that I'd break this down and show it, show you how it's working and and uh, and how the drums are firing and exactly how the sounds being uh, attained. So I'll play you the drums back, and this is just the drums. There is also some percussion in there. Um, you can hear some sort of effects percussion, and there's a drum loop. But, you know, a lot of single hits, it was originally pro uh, programmed in Native Instruments Machine and then each track was bounced down uh, and exported and mixed and processed uh, through separate outputs. I originally had the machine running through the parallel, parallel bus uh, that we can see set up in this area. So these last three uh, channels, and I'm actually going to colour these differently so you can see these nice and clearly are the essentially are the master drum channels everything else in red that you can see are the separate stems running um, so if I mute the master you're only going to hear the things that are going through the stereo output everything else is going through the um, the, the, the drum parallel bus okay so let's stop this there now if I take the solos off and we'll start to listen to the drums um, individually, um, you'll start to hear the picture. Okay, so this is everything through the parallel bus. And what's happening is you've got all these channels going into this transient channel here, or track. And you can see that they're being fed, out, fed to bus 5. And this is bus 5 here. Okay, so let's just take the uh, the parallel bus down. And you can hear it's a little drier. There's all the instruments. Um, but basically, I think there's some saturation, some basic saturation on this, this channel, but it's nothing too heavy. And the mix on this, this processor here is at 22%. So really, it's just a touch of warmth. But essentially, these are just dry tracks. And there is some EQ on each of the tracks. Um, and a little bit of room reverb on the snare from Lexicon. Um, and then you've got some mag EQ uh, just for some air on uh, the hats and some Pultec from UAD. Uh, so general light processing, okay? And these are then fed into this, this channel here. And this is what's really called your dry channel. So it's where all your drums breathe. So then you're not going to like over, you know, overcrowd it with processing. You're not going to squash the dynamics out of it, squash the hell out of it. You're going to let things breathe out of this channel. This wants to be your natural channel. And the, the role of the parallel channel is really to do the opposite. It's to really smash the hell out of it and apply some really heavy processing. It doesn't necessarily have to be too heavy, but something that you may be a little bit above and beyond what you'd usually do in your dry channel. Um, but, you know, you don't want the entire drum track to be eaten up by this uh, this over-processed sound. So it's so you can mix in a little bit of this processed sound and introduce the feeling of it, but still retain your dynamics. That's the aim of the game here. So to do that, we're going to feed this into bus 1. And you just go to here and feed it into bus 1. You can see it says process. And then send it to, to 0. And then that's going to go into this second channel. Now on this second channel, I've got an 1176. And if any of you know anything about the 1176, you'll know that you can use it in all button mode. Now, Waves do an 1176, and they've got an all button mode button. So, you know, it's in the ratio area here, you just hit all, 
and that's the same as hitting all the buttons down. The UAD 1176, running in 32-bit mode still, um, requires you to hit shift. So you hit shift, all the buttons go down. Now, in the original hardware, if you did this, crazy things started happening. You get over-exaggerated transients, you know, lots of drive, crazy pumping effects, and just a really pressurized, full-on compression sound, which is all good, and it's perfect for this. It would be too much if you uh, if you had it as the sole drum sound, but this works perfectly. And obviously there's no mix on this, um, no wet-dry mix on this processor, and that's why we want to use this parallel processing. Now after this, I've just got a simple limiter, and this is just to stop any wayward dynamics or wayward transients just popping out of the mix. But once we uh, start this off and we've got some send going, you'll see that these processors are now active, and you can see this crazy all button mode. That's the gain reduction. You know, in that you'd get normal gain reduction in a ratio of four or eight. Hold them all down, and you just get this crazy gain reduction. Let's drive it nice and hard. And now when we mix this in, you can really hear that pressurized sound. Let's make sure this is at zero. Great. Now these two channels are then fed into a master. And this just means that you can control both of them with one knob. And what I've actually done is put an Oxford EQ on. This is the UAD Oxford EQ. And it's actually um, just adding a little bit of uh, low end. And that's being applied to both. And if you like, you could apply another limiter here. Uh, let's go with a, um, a UAD limiter. And really, it doesn't really matter what uh, exactly what um, plugins you're going to use. Obviously, some of you are going to say, I've not got UAD plugins or Waves or whatever. But it doesn't really matter. I mean, a basic compressor, a vintage emulated compressor is going to do the same job, but something that pumps, you know. Um, so if you want, you could apply a bit of limiting, a bit of light limiting to the, the drum master. But you still want to retain dynamics because the whole point of this is that if you look at this channel, there's not much dynamic range there. And in this one, there's plenty. So we want a nice balance between those two channels. And then make sure they're mixed nicely together. And you've got your parallel bus. And it's really that simple. And if you like to have a little more control, you could take all of these channels and send them all to bus one and individually control the level that is going to this parallel bus. But ultimately, it's quite a lot easier to use the single uh, send. But this is a really nice, simple way of creating a parallel bus when your processor hasn't got a dry, wet, retur a dry, dry, wet mix. And uh, you can get a little bit more of a full-on sound and still retain your dynamics. So hopefully this has been useful to you and uh, it'll help you in your Logic projects. And if you'd like any more tips on this sort of thing in Logic or any other DAW, leave a comment below and I'll make a video for you guys. Cheers.